You can unload it the same way. Yeah. With a little bit of help. Yeah, it can't help me. So I'm just messing around out here, mixing up some concrete. I had some mortar that's probably too old to use for anything important. So I'm just trying to get the feel for this. I'm using my dad's concrete mixer and messing with some ratios and stuff. You know, right here, I'm not trying to make the world's strongest concrete. This is just going to be used for some erosion control down in front of the house to kind of reinforce the bank a bit and for me to get the feel of messing with concrete. Definitely not an OSHA approved mixer, but a good one. done similar to this right uh, over here and it's definitely helped. We'll see. lose a finger in this thing quick. Come on. So I don't know exactly what brand mixer this is. It's an old one. My dad picked it up at a yard sale. I don't know, 10 years ago. All the gear and everything, the back, all cast iron. This is also cast iron. The frame is angle iron. It says Sears and Roebuck on it, but it also says rental on the uh, drum there. So it's an old rental unit. It's nice. So this is my 20 horsepower American Road Roof Face Converter that they gave me probably, I don't know, it's been about a year ago, back in June or July. It's been a great unit, but ever since I've had it, it's been sitting on these flat limestone rocks that I got out of the creek, and I've been wanting to pour a pad for it, and assume that now is as good as any time to do that. So I've got it unhooked already. Let's move it out of the way, and then uh, clean this area up, build a form, and pour a pad for it. It'll be some good, uh, some good practice work for me anyway.
the, for the pad that this is going to set in, I really would like four inches of overhang, you know, on each side. So this thing happens to be uh, 34 inches long, so 42 inches as far as our form and length, and it's yeah, 20 inches, yeah, 20 inches wide. So we'll go 28 inches on the width. So that should be pretty good. And then we'll probably go five inches deep. So there's some rough lumber that'll be perfectly fine for forms. Two shorter pieces we'll use for the insides. So we want 42 by 28 by five. So we'll start off with the short pieces. So let's see. Uh, 42 by 28 by 5. These are three quarters of an inch thick, so that's inch and a half minus from 28. So 26 and a half. So there we go. We'll do that times two and then do the long sides and we'll cut them out. So last week I changed the cord on my skill saw. The original one's like five foot long and completely useless. I mean, what's the odds of you using this saw right next to an outlet? You know, if you're really using it. Everybody who uses these things to make money usually puts a cord on them. And, uh, you know, that's what I did. I just bought a 50 foot piece of cord. This is a 12 gauge where the original cord was a 14 gauge. Both of them are the same rating as far as shielding and flexibility. I think they're SJ. I'm not 100% sure on that. Just a heavier cord. I went right in, took it apart, and installed it. Simple little modification that a lot of people do. But it's better than having to find an extension cord that's free every time you need to use a saw like this. So there's the form. Now I just got to make some concrete stakes. I don't have any. So I picked up three 10 foot sections of 3 quarter inch by 3 quarter inch hot rolled steel. I'm going to be making concrete stakes out of these. You can buy round stakes right here in town, but there's a lot of benefits to square stakes. You know that uh, you know make them worth either making or buying. Some places sell them, but everywhere I found the shipping was just as much or more than the stakes themselves. So I just bought some stock. I mean, they're basic enough where about anybody could make them. So out of these 10-foot sections, I'm going to cut my stakes about 30 inches long. That'll give me, you know, enough room to drive them in the ground good and still be able to hammer my or tie my forms to them. If you're interested in why square stakes over round stakes, check out the Essential Craftsman's YouTube channel. That's what it is, Essential Craftsman. He goes into detail about 
the benefits uh, of square stakes over round stakes and that was enough to make me want to either make some or buy some myself so that's what I'm doing So on my stakes, every two inches, I'm drilling the hole, and then 90 degrees, I'm staggering an inch. So it's more than enough holes. There's actually 22 holes in each post, so it takes a little bit of time. But I just drilled the holes big enough to where a 16-penny duplex nail uh, fits through easily, or, you know, your standard, you know, screw. So... A lot of holes to drill, but you know, you just do this once and then you never have to do it again. So after looking at this a little uh, a little longer, I think four inches of concrete would have been plenty enough for, for the pad, but I've already made this and that's what I'm going to use, I guess, is five inches. I got plenty of mortar so it doesn't, that I need to use up so it doesn't matter anyway. Now, I should have put the smooth side of the boards on the inside as well. That'll make that would make it probably come off of the form come off the concrete better once it sets up. But I did rub some Johnson's paste wax on the inside of this, you know, hoping that that'll help some. So I'm gonna get this staked up, and then uh, leveled, and then we'll mix some concrete up and make us a pad. Well, I messed up. Uh, put my boards on the wrong sides of each other, so my dimensions are off. Not that it really matters, but I'm going to fix it anyway. It'll give me a chance to flip my boards over and get the smooth side in. I'm glad I checked that. So these are 6 inch, 16 gauge, I believe, bar tie wires for tying concrete together. They're just little pieces that are pre-cut. This is a set of channel lock wire tying pliers. You can buy this wire by the spool when people have, people have reels on their side. I've never used one before. And if they're tying a lot of rebar, you know, they just pull the wire out and they use the pliers. People get real fast at it. Uh, I'm going to be putting some rebar in this little slab, even though a slab of that size probably doesn't need it. I don't think that's you know, never a bad idea to put uh, rebar in concrete. The guys that are really good at this, it's like two seconds or three seconds for them to tie one of these together.
I don't know how well that's going to turn out, but that's as much as I can mix in one run. So I just raised it up a bit, worked it around the edges, enough to get my rebar off the bottom, you know, an inch or so, and, or two inches, and then uh, I'll go make some more real quick. I made this batch a little too wet, I think. I don't know, maybe it's not. So I'm going to keep this wet, you know, I'll cover it with some plastic, it's already, it doesn't take no time really for this stuff to set up. I'm curious as to what it's going to look like when I strip these forms off, I'm about to strip them off right now. Uh, because that stone that I was using, pretty big, and then that first pour was pretty low slump, so we'll see. I mean it doesn't matter really, to be honest, but I prefer if it looked good. I prefer it to look good. These stakes work really well. That paste wax worked pretty good, I guess. Huh, not too bad. Not on this side, anyway. Paste wax works excellent. Those just peeled right off. So there we go. It doesn't look bad. I was expecting it to be much rougher on the edges. <clears throat> you can see I got some voids in there. I did not have a concrete vibrator. 
just kind of tapped on the forms. Can't see the back, but it looks looks good. So I'm just going to keep this thing wet for a day or two, covered up with some plastic. Man, I wish I had an edger. I would like to have rolled over that top edge. It would look much nicer, maybe a little better on the finish as well. But it's not going to make a bit of difference. Not for the face mirror anyway. I'll do more rock work around here once, you know, once a lot of this construction's done. I still got to work on that door and stuff as well. It's in bad shape at the bottom. But still, looks a lot better. Glad to have a pad back here. I'm ready for that this morning. There we go. Everything but the into the concrete. I'm going to wait maybe a week or so before I start drilling into it. I think it looks pretty good. Not bad, really. For about a day's work. It says professional grease. And it has the weight on it. That's all it says, professional grease. That'll just keep all the dirt and grit from shooting right up into this uh, socket where all that grease is. So it's time to start busting up this pad. It's at least six to eight inches thick in spots, the way it appears anyway. I'm going to be using a sledgehammer and a jackhammer. It'd be nice to have a skid steer with a hammer attachment would probably make short work of this, but I don't have one. And I don't have the skid steer yet that I'm going to be hauling the rubble with, uh, but soon. But it's time to get started, I guess. I'm excited. here in this corner this concrete is anywhere from eight to eight and a half inches thick at least right here where I'm measuring it looks like it varies quite a bit I don't think they skimped on concrete at all and this stuff seems plenty strong 
you know, they just didn't put any wire in it, and the ground that they put it on just wasn't prepared properly, in my opinion. Just several design issues, I guess. So I've been running the pointed bit. So this hammer comes with two. It comes with one that's just a sharp point and then one that's like chisel pointed. And I want to try this one. Uh, not that this one doesn't work well, but I guess science is the reason. I've put another, uh, another dust shield on it. We'll try. See how, see if there's any difference, if I can tell any difference. This is not going to take all that long. Another day, probably. I'm sure it looks a lot worse than what it is. I mean, it's not easy, obviously. This jackhammer is pretty heavy. But I am so glad I bought this thing instead of trying to rent one. Especially, you know, renting one of the air-powered ones where you have to have a compressor sitting outside. You have to rent it as well. And big air hose. I mean, messing with this cord's bad enough, but I wouldn't want to mess with an air hose. Maybe on an industrial job site, but and maybe they're better. I don't have anything to compare this to, but for 400 and something dollars, I mean, this jackhammer is well, well worth it. By the time I rented one, it would have cost me, you know, that probably at least by the time I was done. This stuff wedges together. Uh, every so often you gotta clean it out a little bit or you can't break anymore. Not and get the chunks out anyway. So Marshalltown USA, it's an American company, been around since the late 1800s, was nice enough to send me a it's a block layers apprentice bag is what it's called. And it's a nice heavy canvas bag, uh, embroidered with the Marshalltown logo, really nice, heavy, metaled uh, opening and a reinforced bottom. And in the Block Layers Apprentice Kit, get a really nice beaver tail, uh, looks like an oak handle brush, a margin trial, these have the DuraSoft handle, a pointing trial, trowel, a Block Layers trowel, and I think you can get these handles in in wood or leather. You'll have to check them out and see. They sent me a string line. And they also sent... I think this is a lot of the things that a, a beginner would need uh, starting to lay block. There's also a pocket inside this bag. 
There is a set of string line blocks. A joint raker for block work. And then um, I guess the joint finisher tool. Now I don't have much experience with these, but I probably will coming up soon. So that's a really nice bag, and I definitely appreciate that. Um, the only thing that the only thing that I'd gripe about uh, as far as this kit, I mean, it's, the stuff seems like it's great quality, is the hardware on this bag doesn't match the rest of the stuff. I think they should offer that in leather. I think the customer would appreciate it. I know that I would. Because a bag like that would last you a lifetime if you took care of it. But I don't know if that hardware would. So, thank you, Marshalltown. I appreciate that. They also sent me one of the it's known in the YouTube community as a Burke bar, I believe, but it's really uh, considered a monster bar. Uh, they offer these in heavier duty than this, if you can believe it. Really nice, heavy pry bar. And then shorter versions, uh, several different variations of this bar. And I've been using this to wedge up that concrete, and it works really great. And I've been using it down in the creek also to move some of the heavy rocks in preparation for rebuilding that bank in a way, or reinforcing it. So go check them out if you're interested. Looks like some great stuff. Um, you know, I don't know if you could probably get much better quality than what these are. the road with Joey's Bobcat on pulling it basically the same truck same trailer the chains the chains hooking the Bobcat to the trailer they did they just tore those completely off and the Bobcat <laughs> just rolled down the hill I remember that that's been quite some time ain't it before me and Noel got married when you get turned around the fuel yeah stay over here Okay. 
Yeah. It starts heat pretty easy when the motor's hot. Yeah. Yep, it's coming along good. Making good progress. So I brought over my dad's skid steer, Bobcat, probably better known to most people. This was a Prime Mover L1300. It's a small three-cylinder diesel skid steer. And my dad's probably owned this for about 10 years or so, 10, 12 years. And he mostly uses it around his property to move firewood, trees, or just small construction projects. So I'm definitely glad to have it. It'll make moving my rubble and stuff a lot easier. And I can pretty much borrow this indefinitely. So I'm about to take it, move these piles of rubble across the road just to get them out of my way for now. And uh, so I'll have a little more room to work. And a piece of equipment like this can do more work in 15 minutes than I could do in a week. So it'd be nice to be able to use it.
All right, guys, I think that's it this week. That's all I have time for anyway. I made some good progress, I think. Got my floor all busted up. Got a uh, pad poured for my face converter. And got my dad's skid steer here. Mixed up some concrete, messed around, you know, on the bank down here. And I started working on the, on the bank that the shop is sitting on. I have to, of course, reinforce that in some way or else I'm just going to be in this situation again in the, in the future. And I'm debating on whether to move this rubble at all. You know, of course, you want to move stuff around as little as possible. So I'm thinking that I'm just going to leave this rubble in there where it's at for now, work on the bank that I need to support down here because access to that hillside is not going to get any better than what it is right now. And then once I'm done down there, I can push my rubble over onto the hillside and, you know, at least I'll sleep a little easier knowing that I tried something to reinforce that bank. So I think that's it. Huge thanks to my viewers, patrons, and subscribers, like I always say. Huge thanks to anybody who's supported me on this project at all. It's definitely appreciated, as you can imagine. Stay safe out there, guys. It's strange what's going on, but I'm sure we'll get through it if, uh, if we all kind of work together and self-isolate. So that's it. A little longer video this week than what I normally put out, but I figured some of you guys will have time to watch it. So that's it. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.